Turn the camera off. So pretty much pre the markup. Let's go ahead and dive in. So I realize what happens is like when you when I'm when I'm with the camera, some people tend to focus on myself opposed to focusing on the charts. So I rather without the camera so I can be just fully zoned into what's going on in the moment. I'm gonna make one of you guys co-host with me. Uh, that way, if you guys see anybody that's trying to hop on, you can just tag them in. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to dive in, right? So reminder again, if you guys have pairs um, you guys are looking at, you guys are not sure about, um, feel free to share them in the chat. And I'm going to jump right into this, right? So um, right here, JubiCat on a weekly time frame perspective. Um, where are we? Right here on a weekly time frame perspective on GPCAD or moving sideways, uh, wider low. I've been, I've been waiting for this low to reach because I'm expecting a, a potential bounce from this low uh, to bring us more towards the upside because we've been in a, in a ranging market for some time now. Uh, but we're, he, we're, we're hitting a key area uh, right here at these lows, uh, potential reduction. But until it happens, I don't want to call or say anything about it. So I just want to give you guys awareness on what could possibly happen. Uh, if anything, uh, I would, I would, if you look at GPCAD, I'll look for more selling pressure, right? Um, I'm mainly looking for sales, any pullbacks that can keep me or keep selling. Um, I didn't get the entries that I was, I was desiring for this week. I was hoping to get something up there within that week. But then scored out the lower time frame. You guys can see last up candle for the down move. Uh, that could have potentially connected there. Like it can still, it can still happen, right? Um, price came back up here, filled in some balance. This can still happen, and this could, this could be what will take us all the way um, to those lower prices that I'm, I actually want us to go, go after, bounce and then go after uh, those prices. Um, but what price actually did instead is price. This last up candle here that came up here and swept this liquidity right here, right? Um, so most of this liquidity, um, it now got tested over here. So break below tested and price now start to kind of move, move like, um, you know, like on the downward spiral, right? Um, but I would still expect to test into this, like price could still come back and test 50% of this candle. All right, this whole zone, let me just identify it for you guys, All right? Um, so this whole zone right here, price come and test it and give us an initial sell, but preferably, I'm, I'm gonna wait for this, but I, I'm still gonna put this to your awareness. Um, that's like a slight 40 pin stop loss, uh, taking price all the way to all the lows, right? Um, but I would not, I would, I would be patient and see what, what could happen if we can bring price over these uh, areas. For now, that's nothing on GBCAD. GA, GA, I haven't, I haven't traded this in a long time, I'll be honest with you guys. I haven't traded GBP AUD in a little minute. Um, GP AUD, but for anyone that wants to look at this, um, sideways moving market at the time being, Price is creating um, so it's a lower low, a new high, high will form there, a new high there, cleared out this liquidity sweep. Price came back down, maintain a higher low stash. Um, for now, I would honestly leave GPCAD, I mean, GPAUD alone. Personally speaking, I don't want to work too much on, on this pair since I haven't even been trading much of it. Um, just looking at it as since it's we're climbing upwards, I'll just follow the trend of the upwards movement, get a higher low, a higher low, <coughs> excuse me, but get a higher low sequence off of a last down candle uh, as you scroll down the lower time frame. Whether if you're aiming towards uh, getting a retracement that gives you the sell, right? You could also do that, but as of right now, and since this looks like it wants to buy up and it's holding. Um, a major area of um, what we call what we call a support and as well also a higher low uh, i'm seeing here an opportunity within that same area i identified i believe that was the two hour right two hour last down candle um why did i choose this candle um for those of you guys wondering simply because it was the last um down close candle that swept 
the major liquidity that was down below over here. And as I scroll down to lower time frames, let me just go ahead and identify just as you know, knowing that that's what it is. I like to identify it as two hour IC. And then as I scroll down to one hour time frame, you can now see the actual candle that's within that sequence that I had identified. Delete this here. So we have this last down candle before the up movement as well. So that's a one hour IC. So that it's pretty relevant for price to, you know, come back, sweep, and I give us these um, potential areas. This would be good opportunities to like enter and take price up with this retracement. So this is like a London session move. So this could actually happen. I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna look at it, but it just, it kind of just jumped to my eyes. So I kind of just did it anyways. So if you get, if you're taking the one hour, this is what it would look like from the opening price. Of course, you can always take it from the 50%, 50% of it is like right there. Just all you need to do is take the fibs or the GAN box, whichever one that you, you learn to use. Draw 50% of it right there. So you guys can uh, view of, of it. Yeah. That's one hour I see. That's 50% of it. Um 50% of it is right here. But one thing is for sure you could always enter off of um the opening price. Opening price, which is the zero zero. So price always gives you both opportunities to kind of just play it out. So and it ends up being like literally the same place as uh it ends up being the same, the same place as as uh, the two hour IC candles. So what I see like, like that my point of interest, right? The IC candles are the point of interest, very, very close to one another. Um, and we're in a move like this, price may just break structure, give us a test back. If it wants to, it doesn't have to, right? Uh, price could absolutely take off, but this would be a really good area. This confluence as I'm, as I'm going out with lower time frames, I'm seeing it. Um, and this is, looks really, really nice, right? If it could come back down, like first liquidity sweep, we're looking at that, equal lows. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, equal highs right here. Equal highs, equal highs. You get taken and you can just kind of just follow the escalator up, right? As you're wondering for TPs, right? So TP one will be here, there, and uh, moving forward and so on and so forth, right? But I'll just, I, I like to go for, a good six, six to one, seven to one, five to one and seven to one. So five to one is gonna look like this right here, about a hundred pips. And the seven to one looks about like this. It's about, so about this liquidity sweep right here, right? So we we'll wait for the test. If, if it comes back, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Like don't, don't force the move. Eventually it will. And um, it's gonna give us what we want. And what we want is simply uh, the money that's sitting over here. And for the liquidity that I swept uh, and vice versa, right? So that's what we're looking for on GPCAD. I'll definitely go ahead and send this out um, in the chat so you guys can have have this and refer back to it later on as well. Let's take a quick picture so I can remember to drop it later on. All right, so I'm gonna move forward to, um, which part of this? Um, do I trade this? No, I don't trade this. If anybody trades UP NZD and I want to take a look at it, I will. But personally, I haven't traded this in a while, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother. I'm gonna jump right into uh, the indices, NAS, S XPX, uh, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna delete everything I had here. Um, I, I, I like to treat NAS and XPX uh, like every other pair. Um, I go down from the higher time frame to the lower time frames. And um, yes, we're selling right now. Overall, like overall candles is, is selling, but we're getting to the point where, you know, we've been selling for quite some time now. And um, I've realized when, when uh, like just common sense, you know, we can't just keep selling, selling, selling. We need to do some retracements if we're going to keep selling and understand any, all these selling retracements is just, all these sells are, is just price and market rebalancing them itself. 
for it to kind of go back into its intended direction, which is um, a buying structure. Yes, we may be selling right now, but even with a sell, market always needs to just kind of buy up, balance itself, and keep going in this direction. So now on, on a daily, I'm gonna go down to the four hour. From the daily to the four hour, I want you guys to notice like we have buying candles, a big selling candle here. We have a new buying candles about but that, that just opened here as well. So we kind of just, we can deduct what the market wants to kind of do. So already the last, yesterday was we we're buying, Today we're kind of center off buying as well. I'm seeing a part of um, um how would I call this? Pretty much a distribution, right? Up here, this is the distribution before the actual sell happened. Um, for those that don't understand what distribution is, it's pretty much when the market moves sideways at a high, right? Within uh, the wick off concept. So I'm gonna drop down to the four hour, um, four hour time frame. Four hour time frame, um, four hour. I'm seeing structures. We got cleared here. Price started to take part. Price started to move up. This is the four hour last down can I cleared liquidity. So the more the way I'm the more I'm like I'm just going down from the time frame to time frame. I'm seeing this here price completely sweep this this whole liquidity. Most of the times we know when price sweeps. Um, it tends to just run the other way, right? Um, we can even see it here in this example here where price swept liquidity and then it just ran the other way. So we, we can expect similar things to happen here where price swept and it could just run and retrace, rebalance itself and potentially come back down maybe later on this week or maybe even next week. I have no idea what, how that's going to happen. Uh, but here, I like to identify my last up candles before the down move so I can at least know um, if I'm taking off from here, uh, where it could be my target. So I see um, a four hour last up candle right here. Four hour last up candle. Here I see an imbalance also here that kind of got filled by that last up candle. So that's a potential area that price may pause. Um, price may pause. So I'm gonna identify that last up candle. And now move. Pause me. Four hour. Um, here on the front, there's this, this one as well. There's this last down candle. The only like we have a lot of bullish candles. The only last down candle we have here on the four hour as well. It can be good to be identified just to just to put you in the perspective of the zone where you're at in the marketplace. This is how I how I do it to identify. So this when you see four hour, I see that that just means institutional candle, um, which is also known as uh, the POI point of interest. Um, for those who don't know. Now I'm going from the four hour to um, two hour, and I'm jumping down to the lower time frames, <coughs> even into the one hour. So I want to see what, what was going on after the sweep, right? So after the sweep, price went sideways, right? You can see price started to go side sideways after the sweep, and within this sideways movement, within the side sideways sideways movement. Uh, we haven't really broken out of the zone. We're still kind of sideways. Um, we have this last down counter here that remember we 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 noticed that it swept liquidity. We've then find that this whole zone is a, is part of that four hour last down counter that we've seen. And I want to just bring things to your to your to your attention that jump to my eyes every time I look at the charts is these candles, right? Like these, it's so clean and there's there's a bullish engulfing candle, right? Or Vice versa, it could be a, a bearish engulfing candle that came down. When it's so clean like this, notice that how market always comes back to test it, right? And then it drops off, right? So we have that bullish, bullish, bullish engulfing, and then you have that bearish engulfing that just fully engulfed that last candle, dropped off. And then if we mark off the opening price, we, we can see price testing it several times. Someone that was, let's see, selling here, and I'm not saying that's what I'm doing right let's just say someone i was selling here um they could have sold a lot of times um three to one like three to one risk reward from from 50 percent they would have only got stopped out maybe here once when this happened only this let me see what time this is excuse me what time is this uh that was nine today 
they, they might they, they would have got stopped out here. That right after that, the drop would have happened. The drop that they actually want would have actually panned out the way they wanted it to happen. So there's a multiple opportunities of off of these institutional candles. So I just just pay attention to it. And why why I'm just saying this is because we have right here an hourly last down candle within this. I believe as an accumulation phase to bring price higher. We've been we've been rolling down for quite some time, like pretty much half of the week, right? And now since we're midweek, I'm suspecting price is going to give us that retracement midweek. Like, um, for those of you guys that know how to use fibs, my fibs are right here on top. I have the same settings as John Dolly and most of the educators. And how I'm looking at it, yes, I'm seeing we have the structure low, the structure high to the structure low here, and then we have this structure high to the structure low as well. Uh, you can, we, we can even say it's from this structure as well. All depends how you want to view it, but the FIB confluence is too, it's too accurate. That's that's why it makes me really realize that, you know, okay, what the market wants to do, where it wants to go. Uh, let me just change this up for you guys. Um, so, yeah, so if I take it from the highest point to the lowest point, we can see, okay, right here where my four hour last up candle is, is the 50% 618 that we learned from Cobain, right? From watching the sessions, right? Which is the first and 10 area where market tends to reject most of the time, right? Um, now, if we play it from this structure, we can see now that, because this whole, this, this is one swing move, right? And this is another swing move. And this whole, like this whole range is kind of the whole swing of the move as well, right? So we can see if price retraces into this, this is going to be the 718, um, And these are, these are the premium areas we like to look for, for price to retrace to and then continue its, its sensational trend that is on, right? Whether it's uh, on the selling side or whether it's on the buying side, but on this side, I'm just, I'm viewing on the buying side of things, right? Uh, on the selling side of things. So price retraces up to there, continuation on the sell. If it breaks above and it wants to go higher, you may decide to just go all the way up until here and then give us that final retracement. Is that all gonna happen all in one shot, all in one time? Of course not. So since we know price is going up, up, we just need to catch the buy up and get multiple positions, like do an escalator, the same way there's an escalator going down here. Um, I can guys show, show you guys smart money. Test, sold. Every like and if I go on, go on um on a 15 minutes, you guys can actually see it. But look, right, last up candle, price came in, tested it, and your stop loss had to be right above this. So it was a very tight stop drop. But you had you need to be patient. Price drops off. If you guys even trade Sean's strategy, break break here, you sell the break, you would have made money right there as well. Right? Even if you're looking at it just on on a logical trading standpoint, you have an easy breaking structure. You have an easy breaking structure. I know you guys have been learning a lot of breaking structure from, um, from educators, um, um, from educator Jason, and also uh, Andre himself. This could have been your breaking structure on a one hour here that you're looking at. Already me on a 15 minute, I already see this here as a breaking structure. So these are things that can help you guys identify, okay, easy, like easy, easy places to spot, okay, I can now get in and just cash with my stop loss above the last high and just go about go about the business, right? That's how I, I literally view the markets all the time. Sometimes I don't I don't even have time to send the trades that I want to send in the trade room because um the move just already happened, you know, and in the in the morning times, it, it's really, really quick, right? Between like I'd say my favorite time is really between that 7 a.m. to like 9 30 10 max right because price actually moves earlier than the session so just to keep you guys aware so um so since we're buying i'm trying to move this film so i want to confuse nobody keep this clean um now this market i'm taking my time with this market because it's going to lead into what's happening with xpx and lead into most of what's going on everywhere else right um if we go on it here on a one hour we see this one hour I see here, one hour I see. Institutional candle. Um, you should want to get it from the 50%. And just, I use that. It comes up to the same thing as using the Fed 50% of the box. Comes up to right here. And that's about, that's one hour I see. 
But these are potential areas where you can just like kind of just get in and flow with the flow with the market. So over here, one hour standpoint. Of course, when when you go to lower time frame, you can get you know tighter stop losses. But this is a pretty good stop. I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty good stop for NAS 100 taking it from this low. You know, I mean, someone someone that's right here within the zone. Like I'm gonna zoom in. To the 15 minutes, someone that's right here within here can get a sell, sells the break, gets this buy entry to just take it all the way to the either to the moon or at least to right to right up here, right? So that's like a 10 to 1 risk to reward. That's what I'm gonna be looking forward to tomorrow. Um, and this indicator is that I, I just turned on. These are John Fibbs, London, New York. These help me out a lot because they allow me to identify when. London and New York session is, is actually happening in my chart without it getting too messy. So if I go on a settings right now, you guys see London session is set from um, three to 11 for me. And I New York, I know New York session starts actually at 8.30, right at 8.30, but <clears throat> what I like to do, I like to set it to when um, stock market and indices market open, right, for 9.30 up until five right so that's how that's how i have it as a setting this is pretty much how my setting right so you can have it the blue and the green right blue for london and the green is i believe uh new york right you can just check it out right here yeah right the green is on uh, new york and the blue is london so that's what i'm seeing right here on the buy now let's scroll down to lower time frames and well, let's go to lower time frame. I know Jason was looking at this earlier, and I, I really concord with what he's saying. Like, um, last if you want to get a sell on this, like this is going to be your last opportunity to get that beautiful sell. And mind you that um, I, I'm not as I'm on the 15 minutes. I want to help you guys observe what I'm observing as well. That's right here on the 15 minutes. We have this void space, but yes, yes, is 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 we can say that okay, this candle has came in. And it filled in balance here, right? This came to fill in balance right here on 15 minutes. But the truth is, the it's, it's still a pretty big imbalance. Price can still come back in and fill 50% of that void, right? Which is right here. And get us this last down candle here that's on the 15 minutes. That would be like the ultimate entry to actually getting on that. If we get, that would mean that we would get a whole liquidity suite right um we may not get it because seems structure seems to be maintaining and given that you know um don't take my word for it but this these um these indicators i just put on for the london and new york i want you guys to notice or just back test it yourself anytime price let's say opens at 9 30 right wherever it opens at price should always come back and test that zone before it goes again and even when when london, when london session opens again right price oftentimes comes right back to the zone as well right if we look back look back to these zone most of the times price always comes back uh can we can see the time here so let's see it is let's see nine 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 thirty where's nine thirty at 930 is about this area. Price always comes back to pretty much where it opened. If it if it takes off the well, no matter the direction it actually takes off in at that 930 mark, it'll always come back to test that same area before actually taking off in its intended direction. And here's the win for you guys here. Took off. Uh, this is about nine or so, 930. Yeah. Took off that side, cleared some liquidity, came back in, went the direction, but it just came back, came right back to where that New York. And London overlap was happening. Test on this uh, for those of you guys that do smart money, right? Just quick visuals. I didn't catch this, but I'm just using it as an example to you know sh show you guys how you would be able to see this happening all the time. Mm -hmm. I've back tested this, so I just I know it works. <laughs> and one of the go live educators that, that we have on our on the platform, uh, John Fibs, John Fibonacci. He teaches um, on how to effectively use these uh, crossovers, right? Uh, but guys, pay attention to Nas, the buy here. Uh, if you want to sell, sell the break, right? If you trade strong strategy, I want to let you know um, 
<coughs> the scalper strategy works <coughs> right here. Breaking close of this would be just an automatic sell. Um, and just to give you guys a visual of how many pips that is, about 1,000 pips. About 1,000 pips, 100, 100 points is the equivalent of 1,000 pips on, uh, on uh, NAS 100, right? So catch the sell, but don't miss the buy, guys. The buy is going to be down here as well. Um, I kind of don't, I don't want to put this because it's not the exact coordinates until it gets there. We just keep an eye on it. NAS can, NAS really pays the bills, right? Uh, if you don't have an account tax to use NAS, like when I mean account tax, that means 500. I said like NAS, you should have a thousand and above, but you can trade it with 500, 500, 500 and above as well. But if you don't have that kind of capital, um, this XPX for you, right? This XBX for you, me, just by preference, I just rather trade XBX than NAS. But <coughs> NAS kind of just sets up the sets up, sets up the play for everything else. But notice how I've gone from NAS to XBX, and we see that we, we kind of see similar structure without me doing too much, right? So this is NAS 100, and I'm going to go on XBX right now. Wait, which one is this? Oh. <coughs> Great, my markers are here. So right here, pretty much similar structure. Um, this imbalance is here as, as well, has been filled. Imbalance here has been filled as well. Um, but not like not thoroughly, but it's been still filled at a certain point. You still have that last down candle on the, on the 15 minute that can still come and get filled by price. Um, right here, 15 and 15. Right here, can price hold this? Price can potentially hold this. I'm going to one hour. So, this is that one hour candle that we saw on NAS, one hour last down candle. Like, price is setting up, like, this looks like a, an accumulation to just buy up and go back to the zones and. For the drop off to finally happen, I was looking for sales off top here, but the way that okay, well, within this, within this New York and London, I'm seeing that we're gonna go fill this section of the last New York and London session, right? As the buy happens during London, or it can happen during New York. I really have no idea when it's gonna happen, but um, according to the time that we are in, uh, we we're, were due for a uh, uh, retracement, right? So liquidity sweep this. <laughs> price could potentially come back to the structure, but the way I'm seeing it, price shouldn't just price shouldn't go past, shouldn't go past this. It should just come back to this area, this imbalance here to fill. <clears throat> Given that there's imbalance there to fill on a lower time frame, you may see the specs a little differently, but you just need to know that markets are fractal. Just XBX and NAS alone can just help you take care of a lot of things. Forex pairs are good when they're set up. So right here on this XPX, that's the last down count for the up move on an hourly time frame. But when you look at it on a 15, I want to make sure like this is clear for everybody on a 15. That's what it looks like. <coughs> that whole hourly zone has never been tested. This we tested it, right? On 15, we've, we've tested this. <coughs> We didn't test the 50% though, but we've tested the opening and a portion of the candle. <clears throat> if structure is to maintain itself, right? At its current time, we will just need to have it hit 50% of this and it will take off. That'll be one, one um, solution to it. Uh, taking price all the way up, plus will be a little bit slow. It's about 100, 100 pips. 61, take it all the way to this high. Now, do you have to take it all the way to high? No, you don't. You just have to do three to one risk reward if you don't want to take, if you don't want to hold it for that long. Three to one gives you about um, 400 pips. Um, 41 points is 400 pips on XVX. So bring price back right here. 
or you can take it all the way to this imbalance is up, up, up on top here as well. And that's a five to one, that's a three to one. Right? So either either ways, it's, a, it's worth the risk. And even if price blows you over, you're only risking one or 2% of your capital. And you can come and, come and re-enter um, within this last um, down can on a 15 minute. That's, that's literally what can happen. Either it gives you a sweep, you enter here, or it, or it holds, gives you a higher loan here, and you can buy. And those of you guys that love to scalp when you guys are on the five minutes and you guys can you guys are trying to scalp the sell, you can do that too, but just be careful. I'll just say is that you get in, you get out. Right? That's that's for those sellers, that's the last up candle. Like what I just identified there is the last up candle for the down move. So all these people here, all these sellers, truth be told, all these sellers are gonna get liquidated, right? They're gonna get liquidated because at the end of the day, guys, um, ladies and gents, um, this is liquidity. I hate to break it down to anybody that you know didn't see this, but this this is liquidity. This is money, right? Piling up, going sideways. It's gonna clear this, and it's also gonna do this, right? I'm sure a lot of people that have kind of watched uh, me mark up charts and look at the charts, how I how I kind of vibe with the markets. Um, I I like to show a lot of how these distribution or m and w patterns kind of pan out within the market and how they do the sweeps on both ends and then go about the direction that they want to play so once again this is um this is xpx um that was nas i'm gonna drop these within the within the, within the, within the chats as well if you're playing this out play play cautiously make sure you're selling the break and if, if you sell the break just go go for a couple of pimps like five points on this, like if you're stopping five points on this is the equivalent of 50 pips in a forex market, right? That's why a lot of people like to like to trade indices. Um, and personally, my, myself too, you can easily fit any account. So this is XPX. Let me just take a snapshot. I can drop to the group for everybody later on. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I literally only trade what I see. Like if I'm not seeing it, I might not even trade it. Now let's move on to ETH and BTC. Let's see what's going on with them. I'm a big fan of, uh, big fan of uh, ETH. Is that it? Oh, 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 that's not what I wanted. Brave. Awesome setup. So G8. Perfect. Um, so let's pop right into right here on um let's pop right in right here to BTC. Do we have anything else left here on this list? Oh, there's only silver on this list. I haven't, I haven't even looked at silver, to be honest. I haven't looked at it. It's just been so I've been in the trade for silver. It's just been something that I have not paid attention to where we are yet. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a second. Let me just let me just think this through. Silver is heavily heavily selling, heavily selling, heavily selling. Last on candle here, last on candle here. Um, I would just suggest if you're going to look at silver, just think about sales. <laughs> <coughs> Only reason I'm saying that is because when you're getting a series of consecutive seller candles, um, liquidities are going to get swept. And um, But easily, what I can see here is uh, what we're going after is this. Right? Last down candle, before that move was a daily last down. So price, price is coming. Let me just go ahead and delete all the noise that's over here. Whoa, it's a whole lot of noise, a whole lot of trades. Yeah, that noise. yeah perfect. So price should be coming back down right here, last down candle, right? And then give us a big bounce up. Um, why this place is just because it's a higher, higher time frame point of interest. That's a daily uh, institutional candle. Uh, so that's why I'd be patient for that. In the meantime, um, if you're looking at it, just get any retracement, anything that comes into a last up candle, like right here. So up here, so like that's what I would do. Or 
in the balance. Like this, this one would be would have been a good example of you know a great re-entry. It's price hitting this imbalance, and you were available, or it was within your trading time, and you caught this right. Like this was like earlier today, like at what was that today? Or, I don't know. I don't think that was today. Are we the twenty fifth? No, that was not today. But right here, imbalance popped in. So pretty much the same concept. So just jumped out the lower time frame. Um, I, I like to play like silver mainly in the morning times. So in the morning time when that New York session and all that happens, I'll be looking over to see what's happening on silver. If we can get an entry, and if we can, I will definitely send it in our personal group chats uh, so everyone can take advantage of that. Um, let's jump into BTC. BTC and Ethereum. Now, um, by a show of uh, show of hands in the group chat, <laughs> in, in the chats, um, um, do you guys want me to mark up Ethereum like Sean would mark it up, or do you guys want me to mark it up the way Smart Money marks it up? I want you guys to let me know in the chats what you, what you guys would prefer. But I'll definitely give you, I'll still give you a Smart Money view of it. Yes, sir. Smart money way. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you guys. So um, over here, uh, let me just erase. Oh, I cannot erase everything. This is this part. Like I, I leave a lot of the things on my charts so I can study. So I can study, go back, see how I kind of caught certain movements. And a lot of these moves will repeat themselves in the, in the future um, and in different areas, you know. Sometimes you may leave an entry and we miss out on an entry. But let me just remove the zone here. This zone is still pretty relevant, but let me just remove this. <coughs> smart money, smart money. So daily, uh, daily, daily. So daily perspective, um, just looking at it like this, we've been, we've been anticipating price coming into this imbalance and we have, like we almost made it. Like I like I hate to be the bearer of bad bad news, but you know, you know, if if we almost made it and we didn't make it, we're probably gonna come like come and make it, right? Um I'm actually just this is my first time actually observing this right now with you guys. I haven't really looked at the chart, so I'm noticing this just as you guys are noticing this right now. Um so right here I'm seeing a, an imbalance. Um, I'm on a day time frame. Um, I'm seeing the last down candle here, but this this last down candle we've already tested into it, into it. The only thing like we could like if price comes price if price wants to come back it definitely can come back. But the only thing I'm looking for price to do is we have like a 50 minute last down candle here, and like I would want to snatch a beautiful move like right like uh, it's gonna be like a night another wick like this. You see how price accumulated here? It gave like a wick sniper entry into this zone. Oh no, I'm going to weaken. I want to show you guys this. So one of those, like wick, bounce, right? Wick, and then bounce again. So if I go on a daily, you can, you can kind of now see the fractalness of the market. So I'm expecting kind of either market to come back into this, give us that bounce, or give us that wick into this and give us that bounce. Meantime, we can, we can ride the sell, right? We can ride the sell because uh, I'm seeing more bear candles, like on a daily perspective, I'm seeing more bears than buys, right? So we had a, like we had a, we had this bullish and golf, and after we, after we kind of just made, made, we almost made it to the imbalance. We didn't make it, so that don't count. And right here, we have this bearish engulfing that engulfed this. So I'm seeing this. Okay, now we, we, we can come back and test. Um, let me just do this as well. I'll read this one. We can come back and test this last up candle before a down, before a down move. So this is technically structural or high, right? So lower low, right? So lower high should be this candle. So given that, so just on a daily perspective, um, right? So this is my DIC, right? DIC, daily institutional candle. So I know that's, I know that's a zone I need to focus on, the opening price, like the 50% the on the opening price. That's where my focus needs to be on right now at this current time. And my stops are going to be above the high, of course. If I want to take the sell just from 
a daily perspective, right? But I like to do more investigation. Yes, I know there's liquidity here, there's money, there's something that price can go attack. So it makes sense what I'm saying. So price has been selling, so we should just keep selling, right? Um, yeah. Overall, all week. So what are we today? Well, Wednesday. Um, this day is considered Thursday, so that was a bull bear bull. That's that's bull bull bear bull is bull. So all depending on what this candle wants to do, whether it wants to drop off, it, this could be just another, this could be another bullish candle. Then it could be bull bull bull, right? Um, but if that's not the case and it does what I want it to do, so we have about four hour. That was four hour time frame. We can jump into four hour time frame shows us that you know we have a big imbalance here right big gap that that's happened price has came in and we swept we swept liquidity we, we hurt both sides of the marketplace uh, imbalance here looking great we hurt both sides of, of the markets and our price seems to kind of be retracing it's doing it's doing similar thing as what the indices are doing right don't you guys yeah like if i if i jump right back into like nas like it's kind of we're, we're kind of doing similar things, right? So, uh, in a sense, in a sense, we're kind of doing similar things. <laughs> we're back to ETH um, now. On a four hour, I'm looking for a last down candles that's, that have never been tested, right? If 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 I was looking for buys, what right, right? Like I want to, I like to give you guys both ways so you guys can choose what you guys want to do. So if you're looking for buys, your your most of your buys are going to come from your last down candles. The opening price or at fifty percent, right? So, given that this one has already been tested, right? Given that this one's already been tested, this is kind of this one is pretty much disqualified for the time being. So, we have this one right here, last down candle, never been tested. That's a that's a four hour. I like to do investigation. I don't like how that there's a whole wick, right? Personally, I just don't. I don't I'm not rocking with the whole wick aspect of the of it, right? Um, so I'm gonna go down to two hour candle, see if I can find a better candle that red suits. So already here I'm seeing on a two hour, this candle got tested opening, right? And it's already starting to get gear up to shoot up, right? And we here we have our, our, our daily institutional candle, um, which kind of just falls falls in line to where kind of the break structure happened, right? So uh, looking at it, just on a, on a fast note, on the two hour, like this is just what my eyes, it jumps to my eyes, right? Um, two hour time frame, I'm seeing this. Last up candle for the down move. Like, yes, I know you guys are looking at this, you're like, why isn't this one? Like that one counts, but it, it, it counts, but I'm just getting ready in case we break this, right? So if price decides to kind of just decide to not hold this structure, which I don't think it's gonna do it, but anything is possible. Um, you would have this four hour, this two hour right here. This two hour, which is actually a four hour perspective that we can now look into playing into, right? But just focusing on what's going on here, the buy, get the buy into at least last up count for the down move. If price decides to break further and go into this area, fine, right? If it doesn't, we stay patient, <laughs> we stay disciplined, but. Um, right here is a really ideal entry. Price may probably revisit that before taking off, or maybe not. This there are this one I identify right here. Price may be revisiting it. Let me just go back to how I want to see what it looks like here. Uh, what's the what's the end of the week? Uh, lows. Okay. So on the smart money perspective, this is pretty much what I'm seeing buy up to here. Um. Like if you want to do a three to one, three to one gives you the zone. Like this is a daily, this is a daily zone. So we're gonna get some form of reaction, right? Um, some form of reaction, but to be honest, something tells me that we're gonna blow right past. Like when when things are too obvious like this, it just tells me like, yes, I want this structure. I want to believe that this structure is a, is a higher, it's gonna be a lower high structure. <laughs> Like the sample price buys into like buys from here into it, it gives us a lower high. The standpoint, like in a sense, where okay, price creates that lower high here, right? So it's you know reacts off of this and then sells, and then moves sideways here, and then gives us kind of that 
downwards movement. Um, but to be honest, I really just really believe that price is gonna give us the downward movement. Then it's gonna move really just fast and come right back up, structure right itself back to making it to these zones where it can clear out liquidity. So just just be mindful, be careful with it. Like to just give you guys a perspective so you guys can kind of just play it out how you choose, how you choose to. So here, so that was, a, this is a three to one risk reward idea. That means you're risking one for three. Um, and if you take it all the way to clearing liquidity, that's uh, six, you know, you're risking one for six times more, about a hundred and, whoa, 176 points. That's a thousand seven hundred and. 60 pips, right? If it does this, right? And it, it really very well can do that, right? Uh, but if it doesn't, we have an imbalance right here, right? That which is, which was our initial target. Remember on a daily what we saw, right? On the daily we saw, we saw this, right? Potential ability of having a reaction there. Yeah. So given that we saw that price could react there, I would not set a limit. I don't. I don't think anyone should. I would just suggest that everyone sets an alert. Um, if you don't have the, a trading view pro, what you can you utilize to set an alert is investing.com, right? So you can go to investing.com, create yourself a, um, an account, and you can set yourself alerts for free. All you got to do is search up um, the pair on a search bar, and um, um, and then set your alert. Right. I, have, I have a few videos on my YouTube that uh, that speaks on least risk management that allows you to kind of um, know how to go about it, right? If you want additional info on that. So that's why I sell on ETH. Um, this is most likely going to happen. Um, this buy here uh, to potentially get this, either this sell here or this sell here, wherever we, we get it. But right now I'm focused on more sells because like, yes, we can get the buy here to there to there right because these are all liquidity points right um all these points like this last up cam this is a great area to sell but till we get there it's irrelevant so price held in balance and held it held here so i believe price can take us to here maybe clear this and we get it from here and we get the sell that brings us to this beautiful imbalance and then once we do that we could potentially look for more upside momentum uh but since we're right here um, and I have I had this box boxed out. I wanted to share it with you guys. Four hour last down candle. I believe this is a, actually a two hour. It's never been tested. Um, yeah. This is, a, this is a two hour candle that that price can still come for. Liquidity sweep price can still come for this. But right now we're not worried about that. But when it comes, we're gonna be very very much aware. And uh, that's why I kind of just leave my market so I can kind of just walk myself through what I was doing, what I was what I was looking at, what made me think that's the way. Just by looking at it on a visual on a visual level, I can now kind of just remember right away what I was looking at. But for those of you guys that are kind of more new at um, at trading the wake up concept, I just suggest always just use notes, uh, the call outs, and just write it write down something that you need to remember, right? Um, I personally don't write down much. I just use my DICs as my abbreviations I can know, and I just know. And I'll call like this, I get to explain kind of my thought process of what I'm going through as I'm looking at the charts, right? So that's that for this right here. And on a scalper level, on a 15 minutes, so I'm gonna jump right into 15. Um, for those of you guys that, you know, 15, if you guys wanna scalp it, you guys already know, like, like this is this is like a now move, right? <coughs> Excuse me. This is like a now move. If this could happen, this is literally a breaking quote. I wanna, I'm curious to know from right here to right here. That's like a 400 pips. So that like on a scalp, that's a good 300 pips secure like if it breaks and close above over here like on the scalp level right if it breaks above over here 20 29 20 that's a buy for that's free 400 pips but on the, on the smart money level I, I really want us to make it right back here so we can catch all of that that's about that's gonna be that's gonna be like a thousand pips for free like 
for free, <laughs> right? Low risk, low risk, high reward. Um, that's how I like it. So that's what I'm seeing right here on Ethereum. Um, probably is going to be something similar on BTC as well. Um, would you guys like me to send this out on a one hour perspective or uh, which which perspective do you guys like more of uh, Ethereum? Great. So which one am I missing? I'm missing BTC. Let this send it to our perspective. Okay, yeah. Let me just do this as well. For BTC, I got I got three minutes for BTC. Let's go. So BTC, BTC, BTC. We can talk all day about it. So, <coughs> wow, did I really just miss this? I'm sick to my stomach. I'm really really sick to my stomach right now. Sorry, guys. Um, anyways, um, so the life of a trader. Um, just delete all of this. I didn't realize we came that low for, for, for Bitcoin. So um, over here on um, BTUSD, uh, we came right back into this last down candle for the moon, right? So price came, price all went all the way to resistance point here. We traced back down. Just in our last down candle, and we barely even went deep into that last down candle um, to lower time frame point of interest. Oh, excuse me. And right here, we can see prices already showing signs. Okay, bullishness, bearishness. But why the low? We hit a point of interest. I I really just believe it's going to just go about its business, <laughs> fly on, right? Um, yes, yes, the sell is possible. So the sell may be very short lived, but about the, the buy doesn't seem to be short lived because the way I'm looking at it, um, just on as far as a, a daily perspective, just going back, if I go back to Ethereum real quick, that's how I'm looking at Ethereum to buy from these levels. When I go, when I go to BTC and I go to those same levels, I, I my eyes kind of just see the same thing kind of playing out by itself, we swept liquidity, looking for levels to hold. Let's go back to four hour. Four hour last down candle, identify that, has not been tested, has not been tested. So those are the areas that we wanna to look to, you know, exploit. Exploit in here. Daily DIC five two got tested. It's not tested already. Okay. Let's see if the one hour coincides. One hour, okay, one hour got tested the opening price, but not the 50%, but it tested the imbalance. 
we still gotta come back. So right here on uh, on BTC, we still gotta come back. Price may hold. Like this, is like a now movement. Like your price just does this right now. Like you can catch catch the wave up, because sometimes like when when uh was the name um was the name London session is probably gonna open very very shortly. When when London session opens, generally price kind of just moves like wildfire. Um, since we kind of already know the direction, these are these are actually good for limits. These are actually good for limits. It's very low stop loss. Like I'll be honest. Like, like 400 is not much. <laughs> Three to 400 is not much. Take to take to 50% of the box. 50% of the box looks like pretty much this. So now I see. My stop is below this wick. Either you take it for three to one to you know that daily point of interest. But once again, I'll just just take it fully into the imbalance, right? The daily point of interest is the imbalance in a one hour. More of a two hour, this is what it looks like, perspective wise. Mm, wow. This clone this or two hour two hour I see and this is one hour I see. So here clone you get it from this level all the way up there. Can we make it all the way here? That's a three one as well. Up loss. Stop loss more than slow. And this could take this high imbalance here or sweep liquidity. If price decides to do that, I have a feeling it will. I have a feeling it will. And to me, I was, I was noticing on a two hour uh, perspective here, um, two hour perspective last up candle, price filling these imbalances, like these are huge gap of imbalances. Um, on a four hour looks looks better, to be honest here. Imbalance here, so price could easily price could easily just make it to this imbalance. Pause. And we have last opening candle here on a four hour. Just identifying it for the sake of awareness. And that's how it just go about it. And when if price gets there and if price wants to react, I'm just gonna assess it. I'm gonna be like, okay, look. If price wants to pause there and sell, I'll just sell from the fifty percent. And because you're selling with the institutions are selling, you're bound to catch at least three to five hundred pips, like to the downside for fun, like for free. Excuse me, for free while having fun, right? <laughs> for free while having fun, right? So I'll just say definitely be cautious and uh, play moves right because if it does make it there, and that's that's where it wants to leave from. Because right here, look here. We already got this beautiful test in. Like this is we're just saying, okay, I wanna I wanna just keep selling, right? We lower high. So this this should be the next lower high, right? Like it makes it makes sense for that to happen. But on a daily perspective, like let's not negate what the daily is saying. Like we could just get a test right here. We don't we don't need to make it all the way in there. We could just get a test right here, right? Quick test and boom, right? So let's watch that till the morning. Um, have fun with it, guys. Um, thank you for tuning in. Hope you guys had a great time on that session. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free. Ask the questions away, and um, I'll be able to answer any questions you guys got before I hop off. If not, I appreciate you guys' time. Mm -hmm. oh, this is amazing. I love how the DXY just is doing it's doing beautiful things. It's just doing daddy dollar is doing exactly what we expect them to do. <laughs> a lot of a lot of nonsense. All right, let me just go ahead and stop this recording.